All right, what's up, everyone? Um, didn't get into the Corn Fairy Tour event this week. I was an uh, alternate this week, just didn't get into the field. So I'm just playing some small little tournament while I'm up here just to kind of make some make things worth it. But um, I saw in the comments that I should do a little updated uh, what's in the bag video. So I figured it's a pretty easy thing to do. I don't really have to really think too much about it. I can just give you guys a little updated what's in the bag, uh, especially in this big tour bag that we have. This now just because of Corn Fairy, but I also have my roommate here this week and I can kind of get two what's in the bags uh, done while I'm here and so and he's also a Cal Callaway guy and it'll be a pretty interesting video just kind of see the little different things that we have in our bags and where we put different things in our bags. I'm always interested to kind of see that stuff but uh, yeah let's get right into it. So we're gonna do this like we did it last time. Um, just not really planning anything, just kind of going through my bag. Whatever's in there is in there. I didn't even like look through my bag to see what's um, currently in there right now. But um, I guess we'll start with my wedges. I have two wedges, two sets of wedges here, I guess. Um, these are my gaming gamer sets. These are the ones I use in the tournaments. I just got sent uh, new wedges, but they actually sent me the wrong um, they sent me a 60 instead of a 58, so I'm just, this is still my uh, other wedge, but they just sent me this one. It's a new one. Um, you might notice that I have, one of them is the Mac Daddy and one of them is the Jaws wedge. I, I, I tried out the Jaws in the 58 and it was good. I just kind of, it looked like there was like a little bit of a, <laughs> I'm a little bit weird. I might, it might have just been me because I don't think anyone else has noticed this, but like this part was like grinded off a little bit more in the uh in the jaws honestly i might have just been seeing things but i don't know i just stuck with what i kind of liked here with the uh, mac daddy uh 58 degree and then this is a 53 degree in my gap wedge um so those are my two wedges that i use in tournaments oh boy we're gonna make a mess baby just like i did last time um these are my practice wedges so i used to use these when I'm doing my wedge practices just to kind of conserve some grooves. I know I can get wedges uh, for free now pretty easily, but uh, I'm just kind of used to kind of keeping my clubs <laughs> going for as long as I can. So these are the wedges that I use uh, when I'm doing wedge practices just to kind of keep the, keep the grooves fresh. Um, all the irons have the same, same uh, shaft, so I'm just going to kind of pick something random. These are the X-Forged Callaway. You're probably going to notice that I didn't really change a whole lot of stuff uh, from last year. This is the same clubs that I got from the fitting. Um, Dynamic Gold, X100, Tour Issue. I don't know what the difference is if it's Tour Issue, but yeah, X-Forged. These were all my irons, same shafts, everything. So I actually go uh, X-Forged all the way up to, uh, to my four iron. Still X forged, everything's the same. But my three iron is actually the uh, what do they call this? UT. Texas sucks. It's just a little bit wider sole. Um, the 21 degrees, my three iron is a, is a typical three iron. So it just kind of helps me get it up in the air just a little bit easier. I noticed when I was in um, when I was in Bogota, we were up at like 6,000 feet altitude, and my four iron and three iron, and almost pretty much my five iron as well, were pretty much going the same yardage just because just wasn't getting up in the air enough for it to really get that advantage with the uh, with the altitude there. But um, pretty solid. It makes a slightly different sound, but gaps the uh, yardages correctly. It's got the same, will you focus? It's got the same uh, shafts that I have in the other irons. So that's the three iron, everything else in the irons is the same. This is my two iron. Um, I actually had a different shaft in this guy a while ago. Um, I had the like a 10 say wide or something like that. But I switched over to this one when I was in, I think Mexico, they gave me this one. Um, I, I just told them I had a hard time kind of getting the ball up in the air with the two iron. And it was great off the tee. I could kind of make it run and go a longer way if it's firm, but coming into the greens, it just didn't really have, it was just coming in too hot. And so this, whatever this is, KVS Tour Hybrid Prototype, 
105X gets kind of, I thought it kind of got, got it up in the air a little bit uh, easier. Um, I think the last time I did this What's in the Bag, I still had that Nike 2-iron. And the 2-iron that I was fitted for, just this head, I think. I think it's this head. I mean, this head is so good. I mean, it just doesn't have any of the problems that I was having before with it kind of squirting out to the right. So, yeah, that's my 2-iron. Solid club there. I'm glad I got that 2-iron problem fixed from, what was that, two years ago or whatever it was. Um, this is just kind of a little cover thing for alignment sticks just so it doesn't kind of make marks on your on your woods I actually kind of cut it down as well just to double make sure it doesn't do that but this is my three wood here this is my three wood I actually so I have a I actually have a Maverick head cover on it but I'm using the uh, the epic flash still sub-zero same thing from last year I liked the Maverick that they gave me it just I don't know I'm not really sure why I couldn't really get as consistent of contact with the uh, Maverick I know the Maverick wasn't a sub-zero this one is a sub-zero set at plus one degree loft I don't know I just thought that this worked fine the way it does and I think people are pretty particular with the way their three woods are and I think I just kind of found one that that I liked and just sticking with it but the Maverick was fine I just couldn't really I think it was maybe like the head shape was slightly different or something and I couldn't really quite find the center of the face as easily as I did with this one I'm just more familiar with this one so I don't know, I'm sticking with this guy um, and then I'll stick with the driver later but this is my Oh, no, I'll go with the driver. So, so earlier this year, they gave me the regular Maverick, not the Sub-Zero, and I just could not figure this guy out. This, not this one, this is the Sub-Zero. I couldn't figure the regular Maverick out for a long time, and uh, I actually... Hold on. I actually uh, was using the flash. God dang it, get out. I was using this flash head for a while. Um, you guys are just gonna have to trust that there's a flash head in here. Um, so I'll be kind of going back and forth with these two guys just because I wasn't really hitting my tee shots that well earlier and I didn't want to make an excuse on the equipment. And so I just said, you know what? Let me just get rid of some variables here. Let me just go back to the stuff that I was playing last year because I know the stuff last year was working because I played well last year. And so that way I can't make any excuses on equipment. It's just, it's just on me. And so I started hitting that thing for a while, figured out my swing a little bit, and then I went over to this uh, Sub-Zero head and I told him just kind of make this Maverick head the same specs as I had for this Epic Flash, just to kind of take some variables out of play. I don't know if it was the regular head or if it was me or whatever, but the Sub-Zero head is actually really good. Sounds nice. I thought the Flash was maybe a little bit loud, but um, last year I kind of liked the sound, but this is, this is a little bit more muted sound. Oh, I like it. Uh, it's a good looking head. The regular Maverick head that I had was also a little bit different. Like they like shaved off this back side of the driver or something like that. And God, I don't know. I just could not get used to the look of that head. But yeah, this Maverick Sub-Zero, I love it. Switched over to it for sure and it's a, it's a solid driver. Uh, and then we got my putter here. I'm just using this, uh, this head cover. It's not actually the triple track putter. I was kind of experimenting with it earlier but it's still the same putter that I showed you guys from last time the the uh, Odyssey tank two ball this is actually still still the putter that Charlie my buddy gave me uh, this is actually his backup putter if you guys haven't seen the other what's in the bag video we'll put it in the top right corner up there but yeah it's the same putter same uh, Garson grip but I actually got a new one because the other one was kind of wearing down pretty good it was pretty old um, same uh, quad tour proto or something like that and yeah just the same grip just black i just i think i was experimenting with uh, some of the triple track stuff earlier and i loved how it looked and felt it felt amazing i loved how it looked and all that stuff but um but i mean i don't know it can look and feel as great as it wants but if it's not going to hold then i'll probably just stick with this guy so um yeah so that's my putter Got my umbrella in here, just in case it rains. Uh, towel, kind of going through this little loop here. Still wear a rain glove in the summer, just cause uh, my hands kind of, the back of my hand sweats quite a bit and just, God, you get out. And then and it just kind of lasts a little bit longer, kind of conserve 
gloves here and I'm gonna go in the side pockets here I'm actually I think I'm one of the guys on the tour that <laughs> has probably one of the lighter bags on tour I don't really put a whole lot in these side pockets I don't even know what's really even in here um, a single tee um, this is a, uh, a greens book from Nebraska, a corn fairy event that we played in Nebraska. So these are actually updated uh, for this year. So that they, I guess they changed the rule, I don't know, what was it, a year ago, two years ago or something like that, where the size of these greens have to be a little smaller. And so I don't really use these greens books almost at all, unless I have a putt where I'm just like, I'm just super confused. I don't really know if it's going to go left or right. And it's a pretty, pretty darn straight putt. So. That's the only times I kind of use that. I actually was staying with my buddy, Abe Answer, and he was telling me that he only uses these greens books for approach shots. So like kind of figuring out what the ball's gonna do when it lands in that certain area that he's trying to land it. So I don't know, so that was a little interesting. This is a yardage book from, I believe this is from Nebraska. Is that Nebraska? I'm pretty sure that's Nebraska. Whatever. If I'm wrong, I love stupid on the camera. I don't care. Um, let's see, there's nothing else in this side pocket. There's another side pocket here. Oh, what's in here? Oh, it's just a jacket. Pull over. It gets cold. Um, oh, so these are actually the sun sleeves that I've been using. So I actually want to give this guy a shout out. I'm not even get. I don't get paid at all. I don't get any commissions for this stuff. But these uh, story sun sleeves. I don't know why I haven't worn these earlier. Like these are freaking. These are so soft. And during the summers in Texas, I mean. I don't even know why I'm even wearing sunscreen in, in Texas because I'm just gonna sweat the sunscreen off. Like, I don't even think the sunscreen even works in Texas, honestly, because I'm just sweating so much. These sun sleeves, legit, like you can clearly tell they're working and it's just a lot easier to kind of, I, mean, I don't have to apply sunscreen. I just put these sleeves on and I'm good for the rest of the day. I actually have a discount code for you guys. It's, I'll put it right here. I don't get any commission from it. I don't even want any commission from it. I just think the guy that's making this stuff is a great guy and I just kind of want to help him out. And seriously, I'm not just saying this. I get a bunch of people that like email me to promote random stuff, but I'm never going to use that stuff anyways. This I actually legitimately use pretty much every single day when I'm out there practicing. So, um, fully behind this stuff. This is awesome. Um, let's see what else is in here. A mask. We live in weird times. Um, what is this? Oh, this is just the other side of a rain glove. The right, the right hand. I don't even know why, why I have this. I don't even use that. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is a uh, bug spray from China. Wow, I didn't even realize this is from China still. I hope it's not expired. Yeah, that's it for that pocket. Nothing else in there. This big pocket is actually the bit, the pocket that I use the most. I was putting, I had this uh, spare head in that big pocket. Got some sunscreen in here. I just use that for my face pretty much now. I actually, <laughs> I switched over to these spray sunscreens because I've been using, um, I've been using the cream sunscreens, but I mean, me traveling with these bags, I've gotten so freaking tired of opening up my golf bag after getting off the airplane and seeing sunscreen just freaking splattered everywhere uh, when it was cream. So. I, at least I know with these sprays, it's not gonna happen, but I'm pretty much done with that stuff. I just use that uh, sunscreen to put on my face and, and just use these sleeves for my arms. So, um, another random rain glove. Where did I put this thing? Uh, let's see what else is in here. Oh, so you guys have seen this from last time. This is my uh, little portable tripod thing. I'll show you guys again. So yeah, I mean, same thing as last time. I mean, this is just a portable tripod legs extend out and it's just really easy for me to kind of um, set it up right here and I put my phone in this little pocket and uh, just line it up with my feet and I'm all good to go. So that's that, get a nice consistent angle on my swing to record every time so I can kind of take some variables out. I actually, uh, I think last time I had uh, like a little camera, a little case thing here, I actually switched it over again DIY stuff but I just got like an old uh, wallet and put some velcros on it just kind of so I can adjust the size a little bit oh, man, I hate only having one hand but you know you know what I mean like I can unvelcro it adjust the size and then it's just this wooden block kind of screws it into the back um, but yeah super useful I mean I use this thing a lot and then in here I got my uh, drawers book cover 
I got a new one sent from my coach here at OU. It says Boomer on it, my last name, OU. And uh, this is kind of where I, where I keep my, I don't know why I have so many of these uh, old score card things, but stick my uh, yardage book here and it just covers it up. Um, and then I kind of keep some of my practice putting balls here. It's just to kind of keep some clean balls in here. <laughs> Um, I also have a, my Pell's putting tune that was in here, but my buddy has it. So I'll just use the, the footage from the other video. Okay, and then this is the Dave Pell's putting tutor. Um, so, I mean, you guys have seen this last time. I mean, I pretty much just have the same stuff as last time I've done this. But you put these marbles on these little holes here, put a ball here, and you putt, and you try to make it so that you're just trying to hit some putts where you just know it's gonna come off and so that's kind of one variable I'm just trying to get, get rid of. I'm not pushing it or pulling it. If I'm, you know, missing it left or missing it right, it's a, it's a misread, not not because I pulled it or pushed it. So. And then there's nothing else in here. There's some, uh, I don't even know why I collect these extra gloves. I don't, probably won't even ever use them, but extra gloves up in that little, little pouch there. Um, this is the, uh, well, this is for the triple track putter. Um, Got some extra weights in here. Oh. Um, so the, the putter that I had, I might overlay a video on top of this if I remember, but they had this little weight on the back and this is uh, this is probably the lightest weight that I can put on there. And this is the medium, the medium weight that I can put on there. The weight that I have on there right now is the heaviest weight, um, just to kind of simulate the tank. Cause the tank's like super heavy. Um, just to kind of simulate that as much, as close as I can. And this is kind of the thing that screws it just goes in one of these things and just screws it but that's that for that thing i don't even use that i don't really <laughs> want to keep it in here but that's just where it's been chilling um let's see back here this is where the water goes water 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 extra water all right um this is where i put my teas in this pouch here and my rangefinder and uh so i don't really like using oh, let me turn this around here i don't really like using this zipper because it just gets really man get out of here i don't like using this zipper because it gets really like this these straps get in the way of this zipper so i don't really like this one so i hardly even put anything in there i think I literally have nothing in there. I hate that zipper. It just gets in the way. But I have some stuff, I think, in this one. I kind of keep some old balls, just kind of some, some practice round balls, I guess. It doesn't have to be like completely fresh. Kind of used up a little bit. Um, one of these driver uh, screws in here. And, and a Advil if it pops out of my head. Just in case. Just in case something starts hurting. Uh, nothing else in there. Tease. Um, yeah, so that's it for that. And then we got this little uh, felt pocket here. We got some trash. These are actually the golf balls I'm using. Actually, I'll show you the golf balls I'm using here. So, they come in this little white unmarked box. I'm not really exactly sure why they do that, but I don't know, I guess it cuts down on costs. So we're using I'm using the uh, the triple track ball Chrome Soft Star. I don't know if you can see that star for the focus. There we go. Little star right there. So that's kind of their spinniest version of the ball that they have. Um, I think the uh, the 2020 triple track ball with the star is actually a little bit more spinnier than the, the star ball I was playing last year in China. Um, it's not bad, I like it. I thought the Bridgestone ball was better, but. So that's the balls that I'm using. Um, what am I forgetting here? A felt pocket. Another ball. I fell out of that little thing. Um, this is the uh, little practice area access lanyard thing that we have to do this year just because of the Rona, I can't actually say that word or else YouTube will get mad at me, but um, 
this is you get this I think you get the lanyard when you register and then you get this little card thing once you get your test back and obviously test negative and you can go I don't know, inside the clubhouse and go to go to the uh, place where we go eat and stuff like that um, so you need to have this thing Got some uh, extra rangefinder batteries lying around just in case and then this thing is the pouch um, this is where I keep all my coins and I keep my compass in here. I probably should find a different place to find, put the compass because it's kind of a little bit hard to see in there. But if you guys want to know why I'm using the compass, there is a free version of my course management program where I kind of talk to you about why this is so significant. This is super, super important, when, especially when I'm at a course that I don't know or haven't played yet or something. They generally can't play without this thing. So if you want to know, link in the top right corner, free version of my course management program. But this thing, um, I've actually collected a decent amount of coins from different places that I've been to uh, since last year just because I've been to a diff bunch of different countries. What is this one? Panama, I want to say? No, Colombia. This is a coin from Colombia. I like these like coins that are like super thick so you can see them from far away. This is the uh, New Zealand coin. Kind of hard to see actually. Hold on. This is a little easier to see. This is the, uh, where'd that New Zealand go? This is the New Zealand coin. It's also a little thick, a gold shape or whatever. Hong Kong, this is like the thickest one that there is. I freaking, I started like loving to just kind of collecting these coins and just trying to find the thickest coins I can find. Um, yeah, I got a couple of coins in there. It's a little bit cool, just kind of all from different different places. I think that's from, this one's from Macau. Um, but yeah, that's my coin pouch. If I need to mark balls. And I think, I think that's it. There's nothing else in here. So. Yeah, I think that's it for this. <laughs> Look at this freaking mess. Yeah, that's it for this one. Um, so yeah, I mean, like I said earlier, I have my roommate, Nick Voke, that also has his Callaway stuff, so I can kind of go through what's in the bag with him as well. Um, be pretty interesting just kind of see the different stuff that he uses. But uh, yeah, if you guys want to see another what's in the bag of another Corn Fairy Tour player, that video will be coming out here soon. So as always guys, if you guys made it all the way to the end of the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It really, really does help me out when you guys do that. And if you're new here and you're not subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you hit that notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video. Hey guys, if you're wanting my help to improve your golf, I put everything I know into my two programs here. In this one, I show you everything that you need to see in your swing in order to be a good ball striker. And if you don't see these things, I show you how to fix it. And in this one, I show you the course management knowledge that elite level players use to play good golf. And these are the things that I wish I was told a long time ago. If you want more information, check out the links in the description below.